So can you all see my screen, the rice slide? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, so rise, uh, good morning, everyone. So rise is reboot, invest, scale, and empower yourself. Uh, it's an initiative from women who code Hyderabad. This is to enable a woman on a career break to return to work. And most of the initiatives from women who code Hyderabad is to uh, inspire a woman to excel in technology careers and thereby they can create a world where diverse women are better represented as engineers and tech, tech leaders. And here at Women Who Code, everybody gets an equal opportunity irrespective of their demographic characteristics and political affiliation, socioeconomic status, or a preferred programming language. So uh, every one of us can participate. And uh, Women Who Code also has a code of conduct and it will not tolerate harassment of members in any form. Uh, so please feel free to read the code of conduct at womenwhocode.com slash code of conduct. So with that, uh, let me introduce our uh, today's trainer. Uh, his, uh, his name is uh, Nishant. And um, he has around 15 years of experience in various MNCs. And, and Nishant worked in multiple open source technologies. Uh, and, and he has uh, experience in Java, PHP, Hadoop, Python. And he, he also has good experience in training multiple domain, training on multiple domains and technologies. So Nishant, uh, thanks a lot for spending your time on helping others. So with this, uh, over to you, Nishant. Sure, uh, thank you, Nandini, for uh, giving me uh, this opportunity. Uh, I hope my voice is clear. Uh, and, uh, yes, Nishant, it's clear. So uh, thank you. Uh, so let me share my screen. Uh, So uh, today's topic is uh, now uh, around the web services. Uh, it's uh, from the topic point of view, it's altogether an independent topic, uh, which uh, doesn't require and uh, not dependent on any of the uh, language or all uh, any other thing. It's a completely uh, different uh, domain, you can say. Uh, but then, uh, yes, uh, we need to implement it. And to implement that, there are multiple languages which support this uh, uh, web services. So today we will be understanding what is web services, why we require this web services, how uh, the industry is moving uh, toward this uh, web, these uh, web services. Now, uh, most popular are the micro web services. We move to the micro web services as well. And to, uh, to, to implement all those things, there are two uh, uh, way of uh, implementing uh, so uh, web services, which is one is so, the other one is rest. So uh, going forward, we will be looking on both the aspects actually, and uh, today we will be covering so. Uh, but, uh, so uh, that's what the topic agenda is for today. Uh, all that out. Uh, so 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 the discussion today will be revolving around the web services and the so. And tomorrow we will be learning about the rest web services. So uh, basically. What is the web services and uh, and uh, let me brief you about what uh, why why uh, the industry started moving toward the web services and all those stuff. So like uh, yeah, when this uh, internet age is started and then uh, before that uh, we have uh, different type of si uh, systems which is written in COBOL, uh, fa fa uh, fa uh, FaxPro and and uh, COBOL and mainframes and all those stuff. So they they the these system well. Uh, written to perform some action and and to perform some action basically to implement some business logic which or in a, in a if you can think of it's to automate a certain task uh, so that the, uh, the the team or the or the or the or the company can look into the different uh, aspects to grow so uh, earlier everything was silo they work in silos of the COBOL program doesn't interact with mainframe co uh, program. The mainframe program doesn't interact with any other languages at that time, C or C sharp or something. So, but then later point of time when the internet started uh, emerging and uh, the, the business basically, uh, the word becomes a very, uh, uh, very, you can say, uh, 
uh, local global space actually so then uh, it i started realizing where then uh, that that different uh, teams different company thought to share their data so that it would be uh, it, um, it would be easy for them to do a business on on day to day basis just like in today's world you can understand that uh, if you want to order a uh, food from zomato so a restaurant uh, a cater and a restaurant are connected to zomato and zomato is using banking services maybe from any of the bank or maybe from the upi maybe from the paytm so they are also talking to the fintech companies as well and then they are reaching the customer who is sitting anywhere in the globe so you can think of how complex the world is today now to to interact or to implement these kind of things the the different type of systems needs to interact with each other and how to interact that uh, how to interact and do uh, do all those things we will we'll talk later point of time but from the problem uh, perspective you can think of that uh, a, a restaurant a delivery uh, to the restaurant person and the, then restaurant is talking to uh, different uh, zomato uh, like the zomato is talking to different uh, restaurants and then a customer whole across the world can access the Zomato app and then they can order order um, food from anywhere in the world depending upon obviously the locality but then uh, to make a payment also there are different type of channels uh, the Zomato is talking to so to implement all those things when this complexity increases then the problem arises wherein how us one system can talk to another system how java can talk to php and php talk to python python is talking to dot net dot net is talking to mainframe so the one way is so that solution comes arise is either we should destroy everything destroy in the sense we should uh, we, every company should get uh, agreed upon okay we will be uh, rewriting the whole the code so that the single code which will do all those things in a java itself but the drawback was why the implement uh, why the why why a company should invest in a new technology or altogether revamp their uh, infrastructure their coding and all those stuff why would they do that first that that question the cost effect the second thing is it is very tedious task the system which is running for for maybe uh, 10 20 or 30 years and you need to rewrite everything so when you are rewriting or you are implementing anything from the scratch obviously there are bug uh, there there can be a bug which can uh, propagate to the new code and all those stuff and the third point is who will own that system now company a b c are working in different technologies and now they are agreeing upon to work on the single technology they invest everything but who will own that uh, code actually who will do the maintenance who will do the bug fixes and all those stuff so there are multiple problems comes across that point of time and obviously it's a not a feasible task right uh, it, it's something like the some zomato wants to uh, uh, wants to focus the food delivery but then later point of time they'll say okay i'll i'll destroy every restaurant and i'll open one uh, one or two or maybe thousands of restaurants in each cities and metros so that i can deliver that's not a feasible solution from the Zomato perspective as well, right? So, uh, similarly, in, in technology itself, this web service concept come into the picture. So, what does it say? Is, it says, let's say there is a Java program which is running fine. There is a .NET program which is running fine. But they don't both want to interact with each other. So, to interact the, with each other, what they said, whatever the business logic Java program is using, they can expose that business logic not the business logic, they can expose the output of that logic to the outside world. And the outside world, that is in this case .NET program, .NET program can invoke that uh, function, method or web service and then they can pass the parameter and get the output. So .NET, what would .NET will do, it will pass some parameters, whatever the required parameter and in, in the proper format to the Java program. Java program in return will return the output and that output, so obviously it's it's just like just like thinking of you are ordering a rest uh, you are ordering a food from an, any of the restaurant but it doesn't matter to you how they prepare that food right how even they they might be having some uh, sub leasing of that restaurant or maybe they are uh, they are uh, cooking something at the home or they are doing whatever they are doing but you are least bothered you are out your your given is you pay some money to the zomato through the zomato and you in return you will get the food how they are preparing it doesn't matter for you similarly in programs also dotnet program is saying okay i'm passing three parameters 
do the mathematic calculation what are the business logic you have and give me the output i am more interested in the output for, for these three parameters what i am getting the output that's what the dotnet will do so to facilitate all those things the web service comes into the picture so basically uh, from uh, from uh, from the picture itself if you see uh, this is this is what the basic picture wherein the client is sending some request uh, to the server using the internet and internet is doing and hosting some web services and using that web services and client is getting the response so this is the older uh, uh, like this is how you can think of if, if you think of a uh, entire uh, entire uh, applications so this is what the picture is but if you think from the web service perspective so you can think of that this server is consume is having multiple uh, applications internally but it exposes only one web services and the client is asking that web services internally processing everything and the web servicing web service is providing the output to the client and client is consuming that web services this is the, the best and the very used to example of it is the google uh, map now if you talk about the google map what do you do you are residing somewhere in 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 globe you just open your google map and you click on, on uh, my location so what that what, what does it mean you are passing some latitude and longitude coordinate using your mobile and you are consuming so 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 google expose one url that url what that url expect that url expect latitude and longitude of you so the mobile mobile device you are carrying is giving you the latitude and longitude that longitude latitude and longitude is being passed to the google map service and google map service using that google map services it is going to the google's web service web servers now internally whatever the processing google is doing they they might be calling some other web services third party web services they might be having some business logic but you are least about bothered about it what do you expect is you pass your latitude or longitude and google should allow, like show you your exact location we are standing on the map and that's what it is processing everything and giving so what you did you you access one url pass latitude longitude and it is sending back the response that's saying that on the map you are standing at this point so this is what the web services will do we will understand more about it a little point of time now uh, if, if you see here the, in the layman uh, thing in the modern day business application use variety of the programming platform to develop web based applications some application may be developed in java other dotnet while some in angular js node js and all those stuff right so that's what I, I what whatever I have explained. Uh, this slide is talking about all those things. So here is the where the web services comes in. Web services provide a common platform to allow multiple applications built on various programming languages to have the ability to com communicate with each other. And that's what I was uh, trying to explain actually. So. Uh, So, uh, what? Uh, so, I hope uh, web services is clear to you. If any any point given point of time, if you are not uh, clear about it, just uh, uh, just <clears throat> just raise your voice, and I'll, I'll happy to answer your questions. So, the next slide talks about what is the web services. So, how how what are the main nit and gritties of web services, and uh, to develop a web services, what all you require. So the first thing is the URI. When I talk about the URI or, the, or, or uh, more specifically the URL, it basically provide a place or you can say identifier over the internet or intranet where you can identify that web service. So that is what a URL, a unique URL, just like that google.com slash maybe mail, google.com slash map or maybe so, so anywhere in the world, no one can have the google.com domain altogether they they it is registered with google so it will be registered with google no one can uh, override it or the or consume that so that's a unique thing which so that you should be your web service should be identified uh, in, a, in a particular domain in the internet or maybe internet it should be uniquely identified the second one is the interface defined using xmls so when we talk about when we talk about we, we talk about that uh, google.com slash map now, how I would know that uh, what all the functions or maybe the uh, maybe the parameter this uh, this function or this web services is needing that. So how uh, how it will uh, like how this uh, this this will be known. So to know this, like just like in human, we have English as a common uh, language. 
similarly in computer world uh, the all the all all the technology uh, company and and the things have agreed upon that the xml should be a common language so xml will be a common language and and it will be used as a neutral language to communicate from one system to another so in now today's world maybe the uh, backend system may be written in java dot net angular pogol bamel from any any of the language or the system but if they want to talk to each other they will be using xml and how they are using it whatever they the calculation they are performing they will generate some xml output output of it and they'll explore ex expose that thing in in the world to communicate and that's where that's where the interface is uh, like uh, written in xml now the third point is they can be discovered by other system obviously you are writing some application or, or some web services which should be uh, available on internet or internet so it should be uniquely identified so and that is that's where you it, it should be registered so we have uddi we generally call the universal uh, descript, uh, universal descriptive uh, identifier I, I don't remember that uh, exact phrase as of now but generally we call it as in uddi and uddi is the place where you will find all the services all the urls uniquely it, it maintain all those things then the fourth point is interact using xml based messages <coughs> conveyed by internal internet protocols so generally these web services are exposed using uh, http obviously they can use the http but http is not more secure or the https and maybe the uh, xml rpcs and all those stuff so they can use any of the protocol which are internet based and they will interact with xml as i told that xml is a neutral language in term of machines now the platform neutral obviously because you are using xml so it will be a platform neutral language and that's where the xml gen comes into the picture because it doesn't rely on what's the underlying uh, technology infrastructure or the languages is being used so it's a platform neutral open standard because uh, because you are this is this is something like you want to communicate one human like maybe I, i'll give you the real time example like the chinese is want to talk to friends and the french person is to want to talk to maybe uh, japanese or maybe the indian then they should be having some ca common grammar open to it right so to for that the standards are open so if standards are open means that they are uh, uh, the grammar is open and how to understand all those things it's it's uh, already in in the word itself okay. the fourth uh, the last one is based on the ambiguity software so like uh we 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 to to uh, because you are communicating with xml so something in a machine itself should be written wherein uh, the xml can be understand by uh, understood by that uh, uh, that system so for that we have xml parsers and http servers and all those stuff so it's a basic written gratis it's a basic written gratis wherein you should be having all those things to implement any of the urls actually now uh, moving to the type of web services uh, so we generally have because you understood about uh, about how how the web services are uh, being uh, why we are using web services and how to use all those things now we have two major categories in web services the first one is the soap web services so the soap web services uh, and the rest sir web services what i was saying is that there are two type of web services one is soap web services other one is rest web services so uh, what how how they different from each other so there are uh, there is uh, a basic difference between the two is that the soap in 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 general word or general term soap uh, if i want to explain as a layman term soap is a heavy protocol and uh, it require uh, more stuff and, uh, and and things to implement wherein the rest is like a uh, document based it's a caching mechanism you can say wherein the, the result will get cached on 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 server and it will get uh, it, it can be accessed with the different different uh, programs itself so the soap the full form is simple object access protocol 
So SOAP is a known as in transport independent messaging protocol. SOAP is based on transferring XML data as in SOAP messages. So we have, so basically it's, it's a, have a, uh, there are well-defined structure of a SOAP. You can think of SOAPs just like an envelope. So just like an envelope, if you want to post, do a postcard to any, anywhere in the world, you should be having some envelope. That envelope should be having some header, header in the sense that it should be having the addresses. It should be secured. Obviously, it should be sealed with some glue and all those stuff. So that's where the security comes into the picture. And then inside it, you will put your postcard or maybe the letter. Similarly, the soap also have the body out of, uh, out of it. So that's a, that's a concrete thing of a soap. So soap has a well-defined structure, uh, rules, uh, template, which you need to follow. And, uh, and, and that's where it, it grew out uh, a big uh, document also. Whenever and, and where to use it. So whenever there is a security concern, whenever you want to uh, have a have more secure channel to be communicated, this SOAP protocols comes into the picture. So and and where is uh, where in the rest? Uh, we will talk more about the rest uh, tomorrow. Uh, what what is the rest web services? Why we use all those things? But the SOAP, if I if I in in a layman term, if I want to show you that okay, uh, in a banking services, most of the uh, uh, like when you do a transactional based something, just like you are transferring the uh, money to some uh, from one place to another, or maybe you are opening an account or doing KYC and all those stuff. All those things. Generally, 99% the SOAP protocol is being used because it's a secure one. It can be tracked. It has a well structured document, uh, which can be understood by by uh, by machines and all those stuff. So that's a so we will understand more about it in later point of slides. The second one comes as in WSDL. So WSDL says web service descriptive language. What does it mean? It means whenever you are exposing a function, you have written a function in a Java, maybe or whatever the language you have, and you want to expose that function to outside world. Obviously, you are not sharing your code. You are even not giving a open access right or something to your code, right? It would be a security concern for your company. But then how to expose? So there are certain type of methods. So you have written a business logic. Uh, let's say there is a function A and you want to expose that function A to the outside world. When you expose that function to outside world, how the outside world will uh, would know that okay, this is the function which I need to uh, consume. So as I told you, XML is the language is language which in, in which all these things can be published, and that is where that complete file is called the WSDL. So the WSDL, if you see a WSDL often uh, on any of the web services. You will see the function name, the method name, whatever the parameter it is accepting, what is expected as in return. So in return, it is returning a string or maybe a teacher, maybe flow, double and whatever, the, or maybe the message or something, uh, the status code and all those stuff. So it's a well document, uh, documented uh, file, which we call in WSDL and WSDL and, and moreover, it can, you can think of it's in contract. So basically when, when two system wants to talk to each other, and let's say a system a wants to consume something from b then a should be knowing about how i can read that thing what i need to pass right if i want to talk to one some other person or if i want to serve one uh, some some person i would be first knowing what their need is right the other person should understand how i am going to understand his voice similarly if a function A, if a, if a system A wants to talk to B and B wants to, cons B wants to consume something from, from A, then they should be knowing something about it, right? It can, it, it, it is not magical. It, it's just not kind of magical. You just pass something in any arbitrary way, things and then you are getting all those things. It's, 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 it's not going to work in that way. So there should be a, some contract, just like a rent agreement or maybe the registry you have for your land uh, lands. Similarly, in, in web services, we have web wisdom, which we call uh, web service descriptive language. This document will tell both the party that uh, that the A is having this, 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 this functions. These are the parameter which they are expecting. This is the output you would expect. And depending upon that wisdom, the B uh, will, will consume that wisdom will generate those functions around it, will build that functions around it, and then they'll pay, they'll pass whatever the things they want to pass, they'll pass using that web services to A and A will do the processing at, at, at their end. 
and they'll pass the output to the B. That's where the web WSDL comes into the picture while writing or consuming or, 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 or understanding the web, web services. <clears throat> a web service cannot be used uh, if it cannot be found, right? So that, and it's, it's a common sense actually, because if you are, if, if, if uh, something exists in this world, if other person is not knowing about it, it doesn't, it makes no sense of that, uh, that person existing in that world. Similarly in web services also, if you, if you define some web services to be consumed by the outer world, it should be uniquely identified. Everyone should know, okay, this is the web services. These are the web services and this is how we can consume. Otherwise it's of no use, right? So <clears throat> now we'll, uh, so till, till now any questions or anything which, uh, which bother you or, or should I proceed? Okay, so uh, just stop me if you want, if you have any questions. So the next slide, we'll talking more about the web service architecture. So I'm directly taking you to this web, uh, with this slide. Now, if you see this slide, the, 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 any, any of the web services or the web service architecture altogether will have three major component about it. First is provider. So you can think of, just to understand this picture, you can think of restaurant thing, wherein you are as an, as a consumer or customer, you are reaching to a restaurant. Restaurant is a server for you. So you reach to a restaurant saying that, okay, I want this, 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 and server should be having those menus or those dishes available at their end, right? That's the first contract. So there is a contract. There is a, there is a contract in your mind and in the uh, restaurant mind, okay? If you are reaching to a MACD, your mind will say, okay, open a MACD menu. So your, your mind will say, okay, now here I can get only burger or maybe some, some cold drink or snacks or some, maybe something like that. I cannot go ahead and ask, okay, uh, give me one Pani Puri plate or something like Chola Bhadura from MACD. You cannot go ahead, right? There is a contract in your mind between MACD as in consumer you and MACD having a contract. That contract is a menu. So if you reach a customer is reaching to a man to a, to a MACD, they will first need to read the menu. Okay. These are the dish this restaurant can serve for me. Now out of it, let's say there are n number of things, right? But I'm not going to eat any uh, n number of things. I only want to drink a soft drink. So I'll, I'll see that. Okay. The soft drinks is this, then I'll reach to the counter and I'll place my order. So the restaurant is serving for you. Similarly, from if, if you if you think from from this picture, the provider service provider is where the MACD is lying. So this is the MACD for you. Service requester is you. You are requesting service, so this is service requester. And service registry is where you can think of in, in this term. Not not didn't, don't take me a little just to make you understand. Service registry is just think of, think of a menu which is a well published menu displaying on the top of that restaurant. So that's a service registry. So Whenever you had something in your mind, you will first check the service registry. Okay, I want to drink a soft drink. Is that soft drink is available in their menu? You will first uh, see this service registry. If you find this, okay, the cold drink is there. But then you will go to the service provider and you will say, okay, give me the cold drink. Now the, what the service provider will do, it will internally do a recheck first. While, while before before uh, uh, clicking, uh, hitting on the bill button or publishing or taking the money from you, it will first internally say and check, okay, is cold drink is available in the restaurant? If they ha don't have in their, in their, uh, uh, in their stock, they'll say, okay, sorry, sir, I don't have, we don't have, or maybe it is finished now, right? So that's how the, in the same manner, web service will work. Now the company A is providing some web services. Google is providing some web services to you as a map. As a consumer, you have your mobile and you want to locate yourself in the world. What you will do? You will open that Google web service. So you are discovering that Google web service. When you open that map, it will internally check, okay, the service is there. And where it will check? It will check on internet itself. So on internet, there is an there is an uh, institute which maintain all those registries. So it will check that registry. Okay, is the Google Map service available? It will say yes, available. Then it, what it will do? Your location, latitude, and longitude will send to the Google Web service. And how it will how it will be sent? It will be using the same URL which you checked here, which is a web service, along with the parameter, whatever the parameter it it is requiring. You will pass everything to the provider. 
now the provider will say okay this they have passed this thing is this service still available with me so they'll check this with their service registry obviously this is not common uh, much common in in uh, at the at the at the google side or with the provider side but it is required right so they'll, they'll check they'll do a check okay this is the correct url the parameter what i'm expecting the survey the requester has provided that you are that uh, things to me let me go ahead and process this request and then the service provider that the google will process do a processing at their end whatever the output they'll get whatever the output they'll get they'll pass on the output to the requester and this is how the web services will work so coming back to this web service ar architecture so in this architecture we see that there is a provider the provider create the web services and make it available to the client application who want to use it in this scenario it's a macd or maybe the google the requester is you the consumer the customer so a requester is nothing but a client application that needs to contact to for uh, contact a web service the client application can be a .NET, Java, or any other language based on the application which looks for some sort of functionality via web services. So obviously, if I want to look at myself or my relative, I'm not going to write any program because it will take a lot of things. It will require a satellite mapping and then all those stuff and the whole lot of cost. So, so just to look at someone, I, I don't want to invest that kind of money. So what I will do, I will, I will consume the Google web services. And who is providing that that i'll contact the provider and how i will do that the broker which we call the broker in this case the broker is nothing but the application which provide access to the uddi the uddi as discussed in the earlier topic enable the client application to be located the web services and that's where the, the broker comes into the picture so if if i so whenever you open a map it will first internally locate that uddi okay this web services where this web service is there and this web service may or may not be accepting these kind of parameter if they are accepting the parameter you need to pass the parameter in this 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 order and this this data type once you well formed your client url that url you'll, you'll using that url you'll you'll call the provider the provider will do all the mathematics and all everything at their end and they'll pass on the result to you in this case the location your location on a map and you'll see your 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 blue dot on your map in your mobile somewhere in the globe and that's how the applications will work and that is what i was trying to explain you here so in this case the service provider first find using the service registry in this case the menu the in, in that example the macd menu or in this case the uddi after finding it it will say okay there isn't something let's send now because i found it i need to I need to understand what all the requirement to 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 uh, place this order. So it's just like you go there on on a counter and say I need a cold drink. Then the person will ask small, large, or medium. You will say medium. Then they might be saying ice or without ice. Then you will say ice. Then they'll say okay, carry away or sitting or carry away. You will say carry away. So this so you you pass on four requirement they have four requirement before serving you the cold drink they need four information from you and you provided that four information from you similarly in web services also you will uh, you call the google map service and then they 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 have that points they have that locations it, it says okay this service it required latitude and longitude of a person so mobile will get that latitude and longitude physically from your mobile and it will bind that thing it will pass and it will create that particularly correct url which we call as in binding and then they'll publish it sorry not to publish they'll they'll uh, you you hit the google map and they'll provide you the uh, request and what this publish means publish is where the service registers so where, where whenever there is a change or maybe you are adding some new web services or removing web services or anything you need to make it available to the service registry just like in that example if there is a macd is removing some item or adding some item or increasing or decreasing their prices they need to remove the old menu and then they need to republish it that is where the republish that is where we say the web services being published so the publish a provider inform the broker or the service registry about the existence of the web service by using brokers publish interface to make the service accessible to the client so whenever there is a change if there is no change that's okay if there is a change then the service provider is responsible to give the correct or the updated information to the service registry the find the find is the request 
requester concerned the broker to locate the published web, uh, web services. That is where I am finding that thing. I am finding the menu, I am finding the Google map, URL and all those stuff. Bind with the information it gained from the broker, that is where the URL or where that is where you get the menu so about the web service, the requester is able to bind or invoke the web service. They can directly call to test it or they can pass or whatever the, if there are parameter to be passed, they'll pass that thing and get the things done. So this is how, uh, this is what the web service architecture is. This is how the web services will work. This is why we needed web services and this is how the web, web services word uh, talks about and word here and there. So any question till now, uh, just uh, stop me. Uh, I'm, I'm just moving ahead. So, <clears throat> so now we understood about uh, uh, what is the web services. Uh, now we'll, we'll more talk about, uh, we understood about what is web services, how it, it is involved, why, what's the use of it, what are the different terms of it? How are the, on the technical front and and the and, and the uh, and the process level, how it work and what all you need and what are the different names uh, which you need to remember while developing web services and all those stuff. So now we are stepping more one step more into understanding the SOAP. Uh, what is SOAP and how it looks like? What are the different parameter of of uh, of it and uh, so on and so forth. So <clears throat> SOAP, as I told, is a protocol uh, using uh, XML, we, we uh, define something and then do something and then get all those things done. So what does it mean? It means simple object access protocol. As you, from, from language itself, from a grammar, grammar itself, it says this, the two simple object access protocol. It's a protocol using which you can access an object. When I say the object, so uh, it, it says it, it is it is in term of output of a business logic or maybe the op output of uh, of any 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 other things. So so uh, if I talk about let, there is an Pojo class which have a person. So I created a person class uh, a Pojo class which have that uh, name age and designation. Let's say there are three parameter of that. I want to access that on the over the internet. How to do that? So to do do that I can use the SOAP. So I can get the detail of a, of a particular person with all the details, what, what's its age, designation, salary, and all those stuff, just like a Java program. I can access all those things using the internet, over the internet, using the SOAP. And uh, there are two uh, ways to write the code. The first is the JAX, WS, when I say the JAX, it says the Java uh, Web Services and the, by the RPC. RPC is the protocol, which is the very old protocol. Using the RPC protocol, you can access it or other one is the document style. So there are two type of uh, uh, styles using which we can uh, write the Java Web Services. And we have uh, basically broader two, two APIs using which we generally develop uh, Java web services. The first one is JAXWS, which is for SOAP. So JAXWS for SOAP web services, there are two ways to write JAXWS application code by RPC style and the document style, which we ex uh, explained earlier. The second one is for the REST web services, which we call the JAXRS. So RS stand for RESTful state, so, uh, which, is, which is the full form of REST. So for the RESTful, uh, it is for the RESTful web services. They are mainly two implementation using the create, creating uh, this uh, web services, REST web services, which is Rex, JAX RS uh, application, which is for Jersey or the REST easy. So this we'll understand tomorrow. Today we'll be going to understand this about SOAP and all those stuff. So moving ahead about the uh, SOAP. Uh, so as I explained earlier, just like uh, in in day to day life, we have postcard, and you are posting sir, that postcard to somewhere in the globe. You need to put it in, in the envelope and then place a stamp, write an address, and the return address also somewhere. It's an option, and then you uh, you you just uh, paste something uh, uh, as in security, and then you draft it and send it. So that's what you do, just like uh, you uh, did physically for any of the message. Then similarly, to pass on a message from one place to another, you need that XML and, and define uh, a message out of it. And SOAP will help you to do that. So similarly, just like that postcard, you have you have a different type of uh, structure with the SOAP. So first one is the envelope. So an envelope element that identifies that the XML document as in SOAP message. 
So this basically, this is an tag wherein you will define everything within it and we call it as an envelope. This is, this is the containing part of SOAP message and is used to encapsulate all the details of SOAP message. It's a root element of a SOAP message. So uh, as, as I show you, uh, if I'm having that readily open, so I'll show that thing, but uh, yeah. So uh, just don't get confused with it, but just understand what I'm trying to understand, uh, show you here. It's it's a visual actually. It's a visual which I showed you. Web service descriptor located. So this is a visual here, and if you see here, uh, it's it's a SOAP protocol, and everything is being defined in our root. So we generally in XML we have uh, elements, or we can you can say tags, and and everything is is residing in the closing and end tag. So like here we say is the visual, and there's a visual uh, the end uh, tag, and to for end tag we should be having this backslash sorry forward slash so that is where everything is being written inside it similarly for soap also it will be having that uh written uh inside it just like if you see here i have so if you see here it's a soap environment and it will be say envelope so this is the tag so soap environment envelope and then it is a uh, it is a standard thing which uh, it will refer where where to map the schema and then closing so this is what the envelope is <coughs> so what i'm referring here as an envelope that is is the tag search then comes the header header is just like on the on the top of your uh, uh, of your letter you write you put place a stamp on then you write some uh, some message or maybe uh, maybe the address where it want to go so that's where the address it it, it contain all the all the nit and gritty telling about what's the beneath uh, envelope is having what's the message is all about and what's the how to understand and read that message right <coughs> so a header contain element contains the header information the header element can contain information such as authentication credential which is be used by the calling application it can also contain the definition of complex type which could be used in the soap messages so when i say the complex type we have a uh, different type of uh, tags basically so if you see here these are the tags if you see if you see here the visual type this is the element if you see this is the element and then if you see the complex type why it says complex type just like in pojo class if you see that's a complex type inside it we have an element id we then again have an element uh, like this id and then delete per, uh, delete return then add person so all these are the complex type because they are have they are denoting something on a uh, on an object level so if i show you the class here also i am having that class with the don't get confused but i'm just trying to relate the thing so that you it would be easier for you to understand so i am having this class and if you see that person class is having that name age and um uh, name age and id so it's a it's a it's a object of a of a person it's a complex uh, uh, object actually it's just not a single thing with saying the private id it's not a single id it's having uh, it's a complex uh, data type actually so when I, there is a complex data type then it will be having this complex types actually otherwise it will be only having this element element name with a name and its value so that's why it's and, and everything is being declared and understood by uh, by the soap itself in the header uh, header itself so it says it can contain the definition of complex type which could be used in the soap message by default the soap message can contain parameters which could be of simple type such as a string number but can also be a complex object type so that's where so so it's if if that's a primitive data types it will be a normal uh, type you will see in in soap but if there is an object or maybe the complex data type then you will see a complex and this is how it will look like actually so if they, if if i show you here it's a it's a basically a normal one right but if you see the visual uh, as i showed you the visual has uh, many complex things if you see the complex type and then uh, so on so forth so you will see everything so this is how it's a, it's a well structured uh, way and there is an altogether different document uh, a big document how to write and all those things 
So I'm just telling you these things because you should be knowing about it because on day to day where we work, you might be doing all those things on your own and then you need to understand where, what is complex type and elements and header and all those stuff. Obviously, you are not going to write these things on your own, the, the big XML file which you are seeing here. You are not going to write all those things. Obviously, you cannot write it. A, a person, even a, a very experienced person, if they are going to write it, they can create a, uh, they, they, even if you miss out a single, this double quote, this visual is of no use. It will, it will not work actually. So similarly, uh, it will be get automatically generated by the different tools which, will, which we will be using. Mostly uh, with the Eclipse ID, we have different plugins or maybe you can create by from the command line itself. So everything is being done by ID itself. What you need to understand is what what is what these are all about first and how to and where to use it. Simple. So <clears throat> then comes that wisdom. As I told you, the web service descriptor language, which I was showing you here. So this is this is the web services web, uh, service which I implemented as web service IMPL is the uh, web service which I implemented. And this is the wisdom. And so if you see, this is the contract, this is the complete contract and the full contract. So now let's say I want to publish my web service to, so that other person can use under any of the, any of the person can use all across the world. What I need to do is I need to give their visual to them. This is an XML file. I'll show you while walking you through the code. This is an XML file. You need to just pass this visual. And the client will uh, client will take care of the client ID will take care of everything. It will create the stub. It will create uh, you know, the function, how to call it, what to call, what what to pass, and all those. It will be taken care because everything is written in this visual. And this is what the contract which I was talking about. So this is you can think of a menu. In this case, in that case, it, you can think of a menu which have everything about it. Right. That's where the uh, visual is talk about. So that's where it says that Wisdom provide a model and an XML format for describing web services. Right. The, the, the next one is the discovery, the UDDI, Universal Descriptive Descript, uh, Discovery Integration. So I was uh, just missing out that discovery, but that time. So UDDI is Universal Description, Discovery and Integration. What does it mean? The UDID, UDDI server act as a registry for our web services and make them searchable. And if, if you, that's where I was talking about the service registry. So it is the place where you register your web service and that uh, after registering it, your web services will be uh, available uh, in a particular internet or internet may be the word itself. You need to define all those things there. So that is where the UDDI comes here into the picture. And this is a very high level uh, pictorial form of SOAP, uh, how it look like. Uh, what all the different uh, things it had, uh, just like uh, as I told you, it's a, uh, it, it's a, you can think of it's a complete uh, envelope. So we have a soap envelope inside it. We have a soap header which talks about uh, as I told that the security and how what are the complex type or what the type, data type we have and all those stuff. It will be having all those details here. Then the header blocks. So these are the header blocks uh, which uh, which talks about everything. And then we have a message body. So the two, three important thing is soap envelope, soap header, soap body. Header can be blank. It can just a uh, single, uh, you can open it and close it just like uh, here, just like we have for header. So there is nothing defined particularly about in, in, in this example for header. But for body, we have a body and we have an envelope. So, but, so, so just like here, we have three important thing is envelope, header and body. And how to define all those things? It's a whole of across like it, it can have a separate topic, topic, topic altogether, which can take five to set 10 days itself to explain how to write and what are the different things about it. But everything is being taken care of by ID. At your level, it will be taken care of by ID. Unless you are not doing anything uh, out of way, um, out of box or something, it will be taken care of by ID itself. So uh, this this slide more talk about what is how uh, if you are looking to a soap message how would you identify what are the different thing and which we talked about so just like uh, as as I showed you in the example so soap envelope so soap envelope itself it will be saying that soap colon envelope so if you see this tag it is the envelope for that particular soap message and you you can say okay now from here the soap message will start. The second one is the soap body. You, so for soap body, you will be saying soap colon 
body. So for, if you see this tag, it will be a body. Then uh, a name of the web service. So we have that name of the web services. So you, you, you'll be having that defined somewhere in your in your business, just like here also. If I show you, you will be having. See, but this is this is the web service name. So what does it mean? It says visitor name. So it says that service name is person service IMPL service. So this is the service name, and where you will find where you will find that web services. That the, where you will find. So port by after port binding, the name of the web service is this service. IMPL. If you see here also in the URL also it says per, ser, person service IMPL. And where it will you will where you'll you'll get how how to track it, right? How would I know if I I have shown this thing to you? But if I if I give you like this, I say as a company, I say okay, I have created some uh, services uh, as per your requirement. What you need to do? Use this uh, this my visitor and go ahead and access it, right? So how would how would the company would know? I, I I'll, I'll go ahead and provide this thing. I just provide this visitor to them. So how the company will know? How that ID will know? To to to, to know that thing, you need to uh, that ID will what uh, that ID will do automatically. That ID will pass this SOAP because it's a standard document. There are certain rules. Everyone needs to follow that thing, just like in grammar. So the grammar has been written, and everyone is right forming their uh, sentences. But the basic thing is they need to follow the certain rule of grammar. Similarly, for soap also, we have written grammars about it. So you need to follow that thing. So ID will automatically read it, or other person also. You can what you can do? You can go and search for the location, and this is where you will see. Okay, this is my uh location so this is where i can get my service this is the location and what the service name is this is the service name in this case this is the service name and what i can go ahead uh, then to check that if it is working fine you can open a new browser paste it and enter it <clears throat> when you enter it it says hi this is the service name there is an access web service now how to get the visitor what i can do here i can hold up wsd to do that hit enter it will open up again the same structure for you and if you are seeing this structure then your web service is working fine there is no problem with the web services and you can go ahead and uh, implement your client to access this web services so to, this is where we read it and this is where it will show then the uh, parameter required by the web service right so this is the parameters which we have just like a parameter, I am having the new ID. Uh, this is the parameter for in that parameter and pass it. ID of it. So uh, this concludes uh, uh, the soap about the whatever the things about the web service, how we, uh, why we uh, like the evolution of the web services, uh, different type of uh, what is soap, different type of structures, uh, what is uh, what are the different things which you need to understand from the visual perspective, how to architecture of web services and uh, yeah so that's where the complete so uh, is, is completed uh, now I'll, I'll taking through a few examples how to create a web services and how to read it and how to do all those things so let me so to create a web service what you need to do here is uh, let's say you have this I'm just taking uh, uh, basic one so yeah so let's say this is this is the business logic which i have and i want to explore it uh, uh, like to rest of the world so obviously first thing because it is available it should be available on internet so it should be a web project so rather than having if you go here and click on new and if you see we have uh, we have under Java, we have Java project. So we are not going to use the Java project because uh, it should be it should be exp, uh, exp, like the available for the internet. So we should be having web uh, uh, projects actually. What you can go ahead, you can type uh, web here and you will be having dynamic web project. Okay. So once you click on the dynamic web project, it will create a dynamic web project just like with what I did. I created a test project here 
and I'm having this, I created one, one class, which is hello world. So let's say this is the class. And now I want to explore uh, uh, this, this class for you. So what I, there are multiple ways to, uh, to do that. The, the best and the easiest way to do that, let's say I want to explore this one as an uh, uh, web service. What I need to do here is I need to click, right click it. And if you see here, there will be a web service and then create web service right so this is so select that file which you want to uh, create as an uh, web service and then click on the create web service so this will open up a new uh, altogether a new uh, uh, window for you and uh, wherein we will walk through so let me create i don't want to go ahead and disturb it i'll, I'll just create a new one for you so let's see i'm having and next question now uh before going it i'm assuming that you know about the tomcat because you already did the uh, jsp and servlets and all those stuff so you know about the tomcat and how to configure that just the project name and here you will change you can go ahead and change the runtime for the dot uh, tomcat version i'm having tomcat 9 so i'm using tomcat 9 and i'll i'll go ahead and Click on next button so leave it as or leave as such everything default and just click on the finish button so i have, what i did i created a dynamic web project right i created a dynamic web project now i'm going to create a class under that so i'll say hello and uh, package i say dot just to so to and I go ahead and <clears throat> hey, let's just copy paste the same code here. Just of time, so so I created one web one uh, one file and or the maybe the one one business logic and now I want to explore exp uh, like the explore this thing to outside world. So how to do that? Right click on that and I'll close the things to your confusion. Go ahead, web service, create web service, click on it, it will open up a new window. Now this new window will give you uh, a better thing how you are creating uh, the web services. Now before moving ahead, we you can see here it's a two approaches here. One is bottom up Java Bean web services, the other one is top down Java Bean web services. What does it mean actually? So as the name suggests, bottom up. If I say the bottom up, it it means something I'm starting from the lowest level. So from the lowest level. Now in this case, in a web service itself, if you think, if you remember that uh, this uh, diagram, so this diagram, what does it mean? Before we are exploring it, you should be having some code. You should be, you should be having some code to explore uh, to do something. Then uh, using that code, you you create web service, and then final product is visitor. You will be getting a visitor. So that's a top. So that's a bottom up approach. So you the, you have a code. You modify that code. You write your business logic, and then you explore that code to the outside world, saying that this is a web services, and how to do that using the visitor. Similarly, it's a opposite of it is. You having that contract, you having as uh, this kind of contract with you. <clears throat> so this type of contract you have, right? Now, if you are, if as an as an uh, third party client, let's say Samsung is now want to create a software using the Google Map. Now they'll not go to Google saying that okay, Google tell me about this thing, give me the document and help me to writing the writing the web services and all this stuff. Google, they will not go to Google and Google, even the Google will not going to entertain them. What they will say, Google will say, go ahead. This is my web service URL. This one, highlighted one. This is my web service URL. Go ahead, use it, download the wisdom and create it. So the Samsung will do, Samsung will, will use this wisdom. They'll get this wisdom and then they'll import that build wisdom and create the web services. So that is what I'm what I'm doing. I'm I have taken the top thing and then I'm from there I'm creating the granular things, <clears throat> the logic out of it. So similarly, here because I'm having the code with me, so I'm using the bottom-up approach. 
But you see here, it says it start. So before one minute. So okay, server is started. So what I from if if you see here, what I can do here is, this is the start web services. So as of now, I can I just leave it as the test web services, and this is the client. Client is nothing just for because you are creating some uh, some web services. So you need to validate it. Uh, you should be you it should be running, and you can validate all those things. So using that, you can just go ahead and drag it to the top most. So it will show you that if if you see the steps here, no client. It says develop client, assemble client. That the things are changing here. Assemble client. Then you can say deploy client. That after deploying it, it is installed. After install, it's a start, and then you can test it. Similarly for the web services, also if you see here, develop a web service, then assemble a web services, then deploy, then install, then start and test web service. So I'll pull it to here, and I click on the publish web service symbol. Right. <clears throat> now what uh, i can do here i can go ahead and it will show you what what's the uh, method you want to uh, explore ex, ex, uh, expose here okay so so i can go ahead one minute this should not be there so so it should be having something like this uh testing of the spectrum right so this is the this is the function which i want to explore explore explore, uh, explore as a web service what i'll do i'll go ahead and create a web service web service here explore here and do the first uh, all the things publish here and click on the next button it will open it will show you the function or the method which you want to explore so earlier i was actually uh, by the second i have taken the public static void main one uh, so now i fix that then and in with the test, testing as a function but or if you are having the multiple function it will show you all the functions there then click on the next button and uh, on the next page it will be uh, like, like in this case i am having the uh, apache tomcat and it started running uh, the next uh, thing what you can do here is it will show you the next start server and then you can go ahead and start the server. Now from here it will show you the web explorer just do a launch uh, so you just leave it as such and click on the finish button. So what it will do uh, because you are having server deployed at your end it will actually publish the things if you see here uh, the on my cursor if you see here it's, it's saying test and test 2 and the test 2 client. So I created the test. It what it did. It it actually uh, like uh, deployed this test too, and it's creating a client out of it. And uh, we need to wait for a while. It take uh, some time to do that. Yeah. So now if you see here, if you see the server uh, server console here, this test two which I created along with the test client which was uh, actually automatically created. I have not created this test two client. If you see here, this test two client I have not created. <coughs> It was automatically created while doing what when when I did right when I did right click web service create services and on the next page if you remember when I did on on this page I have I have put in this to the test client right this doing this step has created this test to client otherwise if I leave it as such like this it will not create any client for me and then it would be difficult for me to test uh, at your level, uh, it would be difficult. You can, you might get confused. So that's where I, I pick this one. But it's better uh, to do as of now. Otherwise, we can test it using the SOAP UI. We can. I'll show you how to do that. But this is what I did when, and due to that, we have created it. it automatically created this test to client, right? And because I I publish uh, I publish this thing, it opened a new web browser for me. If you see here. It's a web browser, and if you just a web browser, if you see, there's other three method, uh, sections here: method, input, and result. So get endpoint. If you click on the get endpoint, it what it will do? It will show you the endpoint. So what is the endpoint actually? So in web service world, endpoint means where you will get the uh, the, uh, the web service URL. So like in this in this case, it's a HTTP uh, HTTP localhost 88 test to web service hello there so this is the url the web service url which i am having in this case so it invoked so this is how you will get to know okay this is my 
which this is my web service where my web service is running if and if you want to test it you can go ahead open a browser click here paste that url and click on enter so it will share hello there this is uh, the the web service and this is the web service name and this is the access web service now if i want to see what's the whistle out of it question mark wsdl and i will wsdl if everything is fine it will show you the wisdom <clears throat> so and then if you see here the location also if you type the location you will see the location here see the same thing here also so this is how you you'll get to know okay where what is my endpoint url for a particular web service but to test it so if you see the get uh, endpoint uh, then if you see get hello there if you click on it it what it will do if, on the console itself if you see here it's deployed here and it's a testing if i click on the testing one so it should uh, something happen space. Okay. So I think uh, it broke something at my end actually. But what I'll show you in the next uh, web service itself. So when it, what what you can do here is you can go ahead and click on the uh, testing. When you do a testing here, what it will do? It will basically call this function internally. It will basically call this testing one, and it will print this thing. At the end URL. Right now, what when I'm clicking here, it says the test to client through an example uh, as an exception. And what's the exception is Java class not found. It is, it is not applied actually. Right. So this is how uh, the one way to create a web service. So like right now, I have uh, I have created a class uh, web service for you. And yeah, okay. So now I, I want to explain one more thing here because you have written this uh, class here. How would client know how to call all those things and what all classes it would, would require? Now, if you see that in class also source, you will see a n number of files. So if you see, you have only created one file, that too as in server side, but at the client side, you have these many things. So this is a standard way. This is how the JAX RS, uh, JAX SOAP will work, web service will work, wherein uh, depending upon what, what 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 is there at the server side, it will create its first the interface, then the proxy file. Would, so it it see all this code is being generated the, by default by uh, by Java for you Java JDK. And if you see, it's using the JAX RX RPC, and that is where the RPC protocol is being used for for these uh, web services. Then it will create a self service. So whatever the function, whatever the method you have, it will it will have attached that method. So uh, client knows about it that in test soap to hello there is the web service, and in there you will having get hello hello there as a web service. And if you see here hello there, we have the hello there, and then testing function there, right? Then uh, then service locator, and this is where if you if you refer that location. The location saying the right here that okay this is the location where it will get uh where it will get so if you see here this is where the location comes into the picture so it will automatically being generated from here and publish on the display itself this file give you where your web service is being uh being being uh published and this is the stuff this is just to call that and all those stuff so if you see uh java automatically using wisdom it created everything for uh, the client has created everything to call your web service and this is how the web service will call and if you see here the one uh, while while creating that uh, wisdom if you see here there's a wisdom folder this is the, if you see the world wisdom basically whatever you are seeing here on as in wisdom for this web service you will be having that wisdom here so this is the wizard. So this is in the design form. It will show you, if we, and that's a that's a beautiful tool actually in, in ID. It will if you click on the design thing, it will show you. It will show you. Okay, this is that. This is the uh, URL where you will discover your web service. This is the input. It will take the input something, and then this is the output. So you will see that thing in a uh, in the in in a form of diagram, and if you see the source, it is the same thing which is being published here. So it is automatically being generated when you created that visual actually when you created a web service and similarly in, in, in client also it created every uh, source 
and then web, web content also it will it, it will it will generate in in JSP also you have you have uh, read about it so it will create the just JSP files here in the client sessions for you so you know, might not be using this client it, it's generally used to uh, while you're developing all those things to test your web services and how to how they are performing all those stuff in real world you might not be using this these things the client will be creating their things on their own so uh, yeah so now if i show you another example uh, which i created so let's say there is a let me create 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 this <coughs> <clears throat> so, uh, so uh, in, uh, okay. So before moving it, uh, let me show you the SOAP UI as well. It's a integral part of it. So basically, there is a uh, tool called SOAP UI. So to test it, one way is uh, which I showed you that we can go ahead and have this client uh, test for you. Uh, but there is an, another good tool uh, which, uh, which would not require these kind of things for you. There is a tool called SOAP UI, which is SOAP S O A P uh, SOAP UI. And what like like right now, fifth version is running there. So you can go ahead from the Google. You can download it. It's a I think one twenty six MB file. You can download and then go ahead and install it. So after installing, once you open it, it will open something like this. I'll close those windows to avoid confusions for you. So it will it will open something like the like this if you see here this is the good tool to test your soap and the rest web services and uh, it's it's a basically a very powerful tool uh, in term of web services it can test it can, you can create a project you can create a test cases then you can run and automatically you can run it even there is a change it will pick that change you need not to bother about how to import and export all those things and uh, it's a very very powerful tool being used within the industry to test uh, any type of web services especially the soap one so how to how what how to do that uh, let me create so uh, let me uh, and 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 to import and to or to test it you should be the basic minimum requirement is you should be having visdel attached to it right you should be having visdel uh, first before doing anything so what you can do here is go ahead create empty project so you can okay, sorry. go new soap project so here i'll i'll give a name called let's say 111 and then i'll copy this test one from here wisdom and you need to give you need not to give this service url you need to give the complete wisdom url question mark w s d l it should be working before giving importing it you can go ahead and test it from here and if you can click here just i click on the ok and it created a project for me if you see whatever the function or the method is was there it has created here and if you see here <coughs> if you see here so this is the request this is a simple because it's it's this method do nothing it just uh, go ahead and uh, just publish or say some some word out of it so it will it will be like this and if i go ahead and these are the buttons if you see this is the submit button and if you go ahead and click on the submit button you can go ahead and see it it created a blank response it's it's written nothing it created a blank response for me okay. so i should be writing like something like this here right, this is open So I just uh, uh, clicked it again and see. So as I when I made a changes, it automatically get uh, what you say it, it it republished 
and it republish at uh, uh, and at the server side it republish automatically because i am having this uh, where is a project build automatically so it's built it's compiled and then it's published at the server level and if you see whenever i am calling it it's also because i am doing system or dot out dot print ln this kind of thing it is printing it here and then it is also public shaped here if you see if i even um, any time if i go ahead and it will it, it, it is giving me the output so this is how you can test it your web services and this is how in from the from from as i showed you the earlier the from the client also you can go ahead and test it so uh, this is the plain uh, web service for web service which i which i showed you uh, let me show you this one so uh, in in this this is uh, something which we do on day to day basis so obviously you are not going to ahead and uh, run a hello world program for you to uh, for the outside world obviously you can do it but uh, that 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 is not the web services is meant for uh, so <clears throat> like in this example we have three classes the one is the so the just like pull class wherein uh, there is a class called a person i am having getter setter and uh, and uh, getter setter for uh, all the variables which i am having and a uh, two string overridden to uh, printing the name id and age for for a particular client so it's a plain simple java class then uh, we have uh, this interface so uh, now uh, for for a web service what you need to have is uh, the rule is saying and that's where internally if you see here also this is what we are doing uh, on our uh, by our uh, by our hand but in this example in test 2 wherein i have just did a right click on the web service and then created a web service if you see here uh, web service client if you see here the in the client itself we would be having as to as to client to source and if you see we 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 created the, all those things and if in in one uh, we would be having uh, yeah so the, if you see here interface so interface extend this one and then uh, using that interface it picked uh, all those things so basically what does it mean it means that you have a business logic somewhere you have a business logic in a in a in a, in a class what it will say obviously you are not going to exp exp uh, exp uh, uh, like the publish your business logic to outside world you should be having some coverage to it so to cover that we have interfaces now this interface is will will get implement so interface will get implement right and this implement will get published by as a web service to outside world so what what outside world will see and then using that interface they'll publish the uh methods for you so uh so outside world what will they they they'll they'll see okay for this method this is the web service and they'll not they'll only see uh, this interfaces actually right so uh ideally it should be like this we have written this interface and then this interface for this interface we should be having this yeah and this only so this so this is how the thing will go so from the end client method they'll call the method the service the service will interact with interface now interface will be implemented so this is this is your this from here it's basically uh, to make it more understandable it is like this actually so this is where we'll explore uh, we'll, we'll we'll publish this thing to for for actually the, for, for client they'll see method service and they'll have a interface then and and because you know that interface don't have their body so obviously they are not anyhow the client will not be able to see whatever you have written as a business logic at your end like in this case also the client has only uh, have a interface they just know the function name what to call actually but then they don't have any insight to this implement and business logic itself similarly following this uh, rule so we have this uh, person class then we have this person interface but this interface will be my uh, service actually this interface will be my service as in uh, what i'm going to uh, publish so in this case i i'm saying okay there's an add person delete person and get person so these are the functions which i would like to publish for the end clients for the whole world right but i'm not going to explore or uh, my like uh, share my business logic all together so i'm i'm having a file which have this uh, functions uh, interfaces 
I'm having a Pojo class. Now what I will do, I will go ahead and implement this class. So this is a, just a simple class. What I am doing, I'm just creating a map map to store the things. And whenever I'm adding, I'm having this adding to the uh, adding ID and then removing and those uh, doing doing the play around it. Simple. So basically, I'm having a map. I'm storing whenever the, uh, the person is doing the add person. I'm adding that person to a map. I'm doing if I'm doing uh, going to delete that I need to pass it the ID so it's I removing that thing and then the getting the person if you pass the ID it will give you the person obviously we can go ahead and uh, connect it obviously this this will be happening more on the database side but but uh, right now I'm not going to head with the database and all those stuff so to make you understand I have used this map now here so this is what I created here now now if you see here to to implement it what I did, let me close this test two now, and we will be having test client here. And if you see here, <coughs> now the same way because this is my this is my implemented class, implemented class, right? So what we can do here, right click, same way, web service, create web service, and once you do that, the same follow the same thing, it will create automatically. It will create the client will create all those things for you, and it will publish the file for you just like a visual file so if you see here we will be having a visual file here uh yeah we will be having hello world and both separate files visual files here if you see here on the visual side you will the lo this is this would be the location for you this is the location for you and if i go ahead and run this file and this file so it is opening a visual file for me this is how we and go ahead and create a, uh, uh, a web service for any of the logic so but the basic idea here is you should be uh, exposing everything using the interface the interface is the key which will be interacting and which will be shared among the client and the server and uh, to test it what the same way open a soap ui go ahead create a new project get the visual file here I give the something name i'll give you a two to do something and then hit OK. And under 222, it has, if you see here, automatically it, it, it pulled all those things add person, delete person, get person. Because while creating that web service, I have chosen that part actually. If you go ahead and do a click on the right add person, it's asking you to how to how to add. So let's say I'm putting some 25 as in this, ID is one, name as in like let's say Nishant, and then run it. So, what I am returning true. If you see here in the business logic, also what we are doing here is after adding a person, it, we are returning true. So, if you see here, the things has been ex exposed by uh, interface, but this function, this method, ex uh, expect person as an object. This person as an object. Now, this is a complex. This is a complex. Uh, what do you say? Uh, type if you see here you will see this complex thing here it's so if you see here get person id it so all these other they are expecting an id here and then the person if you add person these are the functions and uh, what i was trying to show you complex yeah so these are the complex thing so these are the complex i they have created a complex id or because it's a complex because person belongs to person belongs to this one this pojo class and this person has three attribute attached to it so that is where it is adding something and then passing it as in success it's passing true and this access is we are seeing from here so from the client perspective if i if i talk from the client perspective i'm using this soap ui i don't have insight about it about anything only which i know is this is the url this is the uri this is the URL for, uh, of the of the web service. I know the visual. I know the visual because I know I need to just click uh, add, uh, append the visual here and it will publish me the visual. I know the visual here. I know that okay. This this is the uh, uh, this is the service name and these are the three form methods which this service will provide. That's all I know. And then while calling this server i want to call this service then i would be it is automatically the soap is telling you okay for this add person method you need to pass three things age id and name and these are the three names which you need to pass it and in return what you will get you will get a 
to here if, if, if it is getting added. So this is how uh, from the client perspective, you are not seeing anything, right? Similarly, if I go ahead now, I go ahead and click on the request because I created uh, ID as an one, I click on the ID one, click on it and it will see whatever I have added there, it is showing me there, right? So this is how I go ahead uh, and, and do anything with it. Let's say I go ahead and enter this one, this one and I'm adding one more client to it. Uh, so I go ahead and click it, it show me a true. Let me check that it has been added or not. I go here, here, and that was 100 ID, which I added. So 100 ID, and you see here, it is published here. So this is how the interaction between uh, uh, the web services are being used. Now think of we as a client, that's what uh, now I'm coming back to the same point. We are using XML. So everything is XML. If you see here, the calling and getting is everything is XML. Here also, if you see everything is XML, this is the XML file. So, and that's give that's a beauty actually. So you can think of it say English. Now, how would how does it matter for me if I'm a, as a consumer? I'm I have written my code in .NET. I want to utilize a service which is being written in Java. But how would it impact me? Right? I'm just using this uh, uh, this this uh, URL and passing the things in an XML and I'm getting the result back in XML. Simple. So that is where this web service beauty comes into the picture. It doesn't require to be having the same technology or infrastructure. Anything can be everywhere. Anything like the, the different uh, industry company or maybe the infrastructure can be working on different technologies. Altogether. But all you need is you need to have that visual available with you, import it and consume it. Or if you want to publish it, you should be having a, a, a service with it. And then you need you can go ahead and publish it as a web service for you. And the web service will work. <clears throat> so this is how uh, uh, we, we write the code for web services and publish it. And uh, yeah, so that's uh, yeah. so that's how we publish uh, and and work on the web services. So any question or anything uh, I would like to help here. Okay, so if no question, uh, I think uh, uh, we are done uh, with the SOAP web services today. Uh, so, yeah. So, uh, Nandini? Yeah, uh, thanks, Nishant. So, we have a session tomorrow again. Yeah, so tomorrow it would be on rest. So similarly, I will be just recapping the things about uh, about the web services, and yeah. then we'll be uh, showing a few hands-on examples and the rest web services okay. and all those stuff. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Bye. Have Thank a you. good rest Thank of you. the day, everyone. Bye. You too. Bye bye.